going to talk about the power of a product and the power of a quotient. Let's start with this first example. I have 4 times 5 to the third. Now I can solve this two different ways. I can multiply 4 times 5 and that gets me 20. Then I have 20 to the third which is going to get me 20 times 20 times 20 and that is going to get me 8,000. Instead, what I could do is essentially distribute that exponent to each of my two values here and I would get 4 to the third times 5 to the third which would get me 64 times 125 which not so coincidentally also gets me 8,000. So there are two different ways to evaluate this problem. Notice I use the word evaluate and that's going to come into play here shortly. But what does this all mean? Well, it leads us to our first rule, the power of a power, or sorry, the power of a product. When you have two different bases now, but the same exponent, you can go ahead and combine those bases in parentheses, multiply them together, and then um, evaluate them using the exponent. Remember, an equation sign also works from right to left instead of just left to right. So really, whatever's convenient for you depending on the problem that you're working on. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. So in this case, I have 3 to the 4th times 7 to the 4th. If I want to simplify this, I think the easiest thing to do in terms of simplifying is multiply 3 times 7 and then apply that to the fourth. So simplified, that would get me 21 to the fourth. Now if I were asked to evaluate this, then I would go ahead and have to take that a step further and do 21 times 21 times 21 times 21. Or 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7, which might be a little easier. In any case over here now, I have 1.8 squared times 0 0.75. So I'm going to go ahead and put that value in parentheses and then square it. Now 1.8 times 0 0.75 is 1.35 and then that value is squared. How about 2r to the fifth times 7s to the fifth? Well, in this case, when dealing with an algebraic expression, the rules follow the same. Um, I still have same exponent, different bases, so I'm just going to go ahead and work 2r times 7s to the fifth. That's going to get me 14rs to the fifth. Now, here's where you have to be a little careful, because I just can't write this to the fifth because what that would mean is that would just say that my s is raised to the fifth power. So by putting it all in parentheses, that's telling me that everything inside this parentheses is being raised to the fifth power. And if we had to evaluate this, then we would take 14 to the fifth, which, which is some large number, and then r to the fifth, s to the fifth. But here in parentheses, it's showing that everything is being simplified to that fifth. This brings us to our first challenge problem. You can go ahead and do this one on your own, and we'll talk about it tomorrow. If you don't feel like working on the challenge problem, or maybe you want to save it for later, see if something clues you in. But now what we're going to do is move on to the power of a quotient property. So if I have 2 thirds to the fifth, that means I have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 divided by 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which really means I have 2 to the 5th over 3 to the 5th. Now, again, if I'm asked to simplify, this is probably where I would leave it. Um, 
but what I could also do is evaluate this number to come up with some sort of answer. And let's say I am asked to evaluate this. Well, then I take 2 to the 5th, which is 32, and that is over 3 to the 5th, which is 243. So simplified, evaluated. If I take x to the fifth over y to the fifth, again, similarly, I could say I have x times x times x times x times x over y times y times y times y times y. And this helps to illustrate our quotient rule, the power of a quotient property where if I have something in parentheses, I have two different bases being divided, and they're being divided by a similar exponent, I can go ahead and separate that out. So I have a over b in parentheses to the m equals a to the m over b to the m. Again, let's take a look at a couple more examples. So if I have 2 to the 4th divided by 6 to the 4th, that means I have 2 over 6 to the 4th, which really I can simplify that 2 over 6 and get 1 third to the fourth. That's simplified form. If I'm asked to evaluate, then I would take this a step further, at which point I would work out what 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is, which we all know to be 81. But so far, if we're just simplifying, we're going to leave it here. I have 5x to the ninth divided by 4y to the ninth, which means I can write it as 5x over 4y to the ninth. Simplified form. Again, if I'm asked to evaluate, I need to take it a step further. But I'm not being asked to do so. Now let's look at this one. All right, this might look pretty complicated, and you might be tempted to write things out the long way. But don't do it. There's a reason we work with exponents, because there are shortcuts. Let's take a look at this first part. I have a power raised to another power, so 7 to the second to the third is going to get me 7 to the 2 times 3. That's 7 to the sixth times, now I rewrite this, 7 to the sixth, 4 to the sixth, 2 to the sixth. All right, they are all written with the same exponent. So what I can do is go ahead and put this in parentheses, 7 times 4 to the 6th divided by 2 to the 6th. So that gets me 28 to the 6th divided by 2 to the 6th. Again, don't do this the long way. Using my handy dandy power of a quotient property, I see that I can rewrite 28 to the 6th divided by 2 to the 6th as 28 divided by 2 in parentheses to the sixth. I can simplify that to 14 to the sixth. Now, again, simplified here. Um, if we had to evaluate, we would have to take it a step further. Thankfully, we don't have to. Those are the two rules. Now, what I'm going to leave you with is challenge B. Ooh, this is an awesome one. It's going to involve a lot of steps, and what I want you to go ahead and do is evaluate the final answer. Yes. So simplify and evaluate if possible. That is your challenge. Have a good one.